Hey friends, are you ready to add a pop of color and new life to your furniture finds? Jump in as we tackle the transformation of these thrift store end tables with a few nifty tricks up our sleeves. We've got cane reed repairs, a bit of painting magic, and a color reveal that's going to knock your socks off. Stick around as we share all the details and maybe you'll be inspired to embark on your own furniture flipping adventure. These two end tables were bought at different thrift stores, but both have a cane shelf. The cane reading was messed up and missing on one end table, and the other end table, the finish on the top was bubbled up a bit. Let's make these end tables match and fix the damaged finish on them. First, I tried to lighten the cane by removing the old finish. I sprayed on a coat of Stripwell QCS and let it sit for 15 minutes. Then applied another coat and let it sit again. The finish came off easily when I scrubbed it a bit with a toothbrush. Oh, I love when that happens. Look at how satisfying it is. I scraped off most of the finish from the border as well, so I didn't have a hard line where the finish was removed. Then I wiped off the excess stripper with a paper towel and water. All right, the finish on this one is not coming off, so I'm gonna have to let it sit with more stripper before it will come off, hopefully. Hopefully it will come off. And then this one over here, it did really well. It scrubbed off super easily. Uh, let's go look over at it. Would you just look at that? So it's darker right now than what I expect it to be just because it is wet. So once it dries, I think it will lighten up, but it came off really, really well. Now over here on this side, I started to scrub right here, but it did not come off. So I sprayed more stripper on it and I am just gonna keep trying to strip it off. That one was so much easier over there than this one. But after 15 minutes, the finish was very hard still. I scrubbed with the toothbrush, but it didn't seem to remove much. So I did what anybody would do. I gave up and wiped off the QCS with more paper towels and water. Then I let it dry overnight. Here's what they looked like the next day when dry. They definitely did not look the same color, so we're gonna have to do something about that. But first we had to fix the cane. I bought a similar size of the reed border off Amazon and then cut enough of it to fix the missing area. Then I soaked it in some water for about 30 minutes to soften it up. After 30 minutes, it was much more pliable and I was able to hammer it into the groove where the old reed was. Not sure if this is the best method, but it worked. Then I used some stain that I had on hand to stain it a little bit darker. It wasn't an exact match here, but that's okay. I just needed it to be a little bit of a darker brown color. Okay, so this one over here is really light and this one over here is darker. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a this pink color I'm going to add some water to it and I am going to do a paint wash just on the cane. I mix up the paint with the water to make a paint wash and I brushed it on and immediately wiped it back off. This left the natural wood grain peeking out a bit, but it made the cane look very similar. I ended up with two coats to make the cane look the same on both end tables. The next day when it was all dry, I taped off the cane with some delicate frog tape since I just painted the surface the day before. I cut the tape around the edges and then I placed plastic on top to cover all of the cane. Before I could paint, I scuffed up the finish on each of the end tables to help the paint stick. I used foam pads to easily sand all the curves and details and then I used 220 grit screens to sand the flat surfaces. I also sanded the finish off completely on the top of the one end table. I was nervous about this part and I'll explain why in a second, but I sanded the finish off of the top with 120 grit sanding screens, hoping to not sand through the veneer. I'm so excited. Okay, so this table had like little bumps in it all over the table. I mean, if you look close, you can see spots where it's lighter colored. That's where all of the bumps were. So I was so nervous. I thought that when I started sanding this, it was gonna just sand right through the veneer into like some MDF or particle board or something. But guys, it sanded. It did not go through the veneer. So this must be some thicker veneer. It's so smooth. 
the bubbles are basically gone. So that is awesome news. I have been really, really nervous about that. While doing this, I saw some dings, so I filled them in with some plastic wood filler and then I let it dry. The next day, my husband sanded the wood filler down for me, then vacuumed up all of the dust from sanding and then wiped the tables down with a tack cloth to remove any remaining dust. He then took them outside and sprayed on two coats of clear shellac to prevent bleed through stains from coming through the paint and to help the paint stick even better. We let them dry overnight and then brought them back inside our workshop to warm them up. Finally, time to paint the rest of the end tables. All right, I am in a conundrum. I'm trying to figure out what color to paint these. Here are the paint color choices so far. So I have a deep red, I have this blue slate, and then I have vintage moss. Here are the color options. And if I am being completely honest, I'm a little bit bored with the blue and the green and my heart is going for that red, which is so weird to me because I've been against red for a long time, but I guess that's what I did with the green too. I was against green for the longest time and then I just could not get enough of it. In the end, I chose the deep moody red paint color called Sommelier, did I say that right? In Sherwin-Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel. I mixed it with 20% water into my Wagner Flexio 595 paint sprayer, also known as the 3500 paint sprayer. I sprayed on two coats of paint, letting it dry for four hours between coats of paint. While spraying on the paint though, I saw the tape move a little bit here and there, and I thought, oh crap, I'm gonna have a lot of touch-up painting on that cane. The next day, I removed the tape, and it wasn't terrible, but it could have been better. I sanded the edge of the cane with some 120 grit sandpaper to remove the red paint here and there, and touched up some of the paint. Here's what they looked like before, and here's what they look like now. I love this deep red color, which is shocking to me because I've been against red for a while now. These tables match, but they're different, and I just think they're perfect. What do you think of the color? Let me know in the comments. Well, that's the grand tour of my red end tables. If you had as much fun as I did, give me a thumbs up. It's like a high five for my efforts. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more painted furniture makeovers. And hey, your thoughts and shares are what keeps this community fun. So drop your comments below and let's keep the conversation going. Want to turn your hobby into cash? Click the link in my comments to download the free pricing guide that we use to buy and sell furniture.